Although u substitution is a very powerful tool for solving integrals, it can't be used for everything. In this video, I'll be explaining another integration technique called integration by parts that can be used to find some pretty complex integrals. Once again, in order to truly learn this concept, it's important to understand where it comes from. If you've seen our last video, then you've already seen how we can derive an integration technique from one of our derivative rules. In that video, we found that u substitution comes from the chain rule for derivatives. For this video, let's take a look at the product rule. As a reminder from our product rule video, you need this rule whenever you are taking the derivative of something that has two functions being multiplied together. Let's call these two functions u and v. The product rule then says that the derivative of this, duv dx, is the first function, u, times the derivative of the second function, dv dx, plus the second function, v, times the derivative of the first function, du dx. Alright, but how does this help with finding integrals? There are no integral symbols anywhere. Well, let's add some in by taking the integral of both sides of this equation with respect to x. In doing so, we find that in each of these integrals, there is a dx that could cancel with the one from the integral to leave us with the integral of duv equals the integral of u dv plus the integral of v du. Unfortunately, the only one of these that we can actually solve is the one on the left which is simply uv from the integral power rule. Then, let's subtract both sides by the integral of v du to get one integral on each side. Finally, let's just swap the two sides of this equation so that we are left with the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, sweet. Math is awesome, but how does this help us find any integrals? Well, what we discovered is essentially a way to convert an integral that may be difficult or unsolvable into an integral that is potentially easier to solve with this little uv conversion factor. And this is exactly what the integration by parts technique ends up looking like. With the general concept covered, let's now see how we can actually use it. And since this process is sometimes a little confusing, let's do an example alongside the explanation. Let's say we want to find the integral of x times e to the x, which, written as an actual integral, looks like this. Alright, so our first step is to pick what our u and dv are in the integral we can't figure out. For this example, let's pick u to be x, and then our dv becomes everything else, aka e to the x dx. Okay, now to use our integration by parts formula and convert our difficult integral, we need u, which we already have, and then v and du, which we still need to find. So how do we find these? Well, we can find du by taking the derivative of u, du dx. For our example, using the power rule, we get that du dx is equal to 1. Then multiplying both sides by dx to isolate du, we get that du is equal to dx. Next, we need to find v. And we can do that by integrating what we picked for our dv. When dv is equal to e to the x dx, taking the integral of both sides gives us v equals e to the x. Great, now we can plug all this stuff into our formula. This tells us that the complex integral of x times e to the x is equal to x times e to the x minus the integral of e to the x dx. So after that little bit of work, we were able to translate our difficult integral into a new integral that is much easier to solve. In the case of our example, this new integral ends up being just e to the x, which gives us our final answer of x times e to the x minus e to the x. And of course, let's tack on our plus c because it's an indefinite integral. Now if this answer still seems a little mysterious, I encourage you to go ahead and take the derivative of this to make sure you get back to our original result of x times e to the x. Now although this process may seem pretty straightforward, there is one key step I glossed over that may prove pretty difficult, and that's the very first one, picking your u and dv. Once you have your u and dv set from your difficult integral, the other four steps follow directly from that. 
But how do you know what to make these values? Well, just like use substitution, you can always make an educated guess and go through the steps to see if it works out. But is there a better way to go about this? Luckily, there is. And I will go over this strategy for exactly how to pick your U and DV in our next video. In the meantime, if you found this one helpful, please click the like and subscribe buttons below this video to help us help more students like you. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams, don't let a class get in the way.